And we are live back. Hello, uh, Madam Heather. Thank you so much again for uh, coming to the show. Today we are meeting in our um, virtual studio because I know your schedule is pretty packed. How have you been since our last episode? I'm doing great, Victor. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. It's been a busy time at SBA, uh, as you can imagine. So yeah, we've got a lot to catch up on. I'm obviously interested in everything. I believe that our audience as well, uh, business right now is in a kind of a difficult situation. The economy is slowing down. So any piece of advice, any good news for the business are extremely appreciated. Of course. So the agency has um, come up with a couple of different things over the last year that um, you know we can kind of catch up on here. So we've gone through uh, a revamp of our contracting programs. And when I say contracting programs, I'm talking about um, like uh, uh, 8A, which is the um, mentoring program that, that SBA offers to small businesses. It's actually a nine-year program that puts small businesses in a position to um, work with uh, federal contractors, um, other federal agencies to gain access to some of the uh, products and services that they offer. So it, it's a great program. Then we also have the Women um, Small Business uh, Certification Program and uh, Veteran Owned, etc. So what we've done is we've taken four different platforms that small businesses used to apply for these programs through and consolidated them. And we're getting ready to launch that new platform that will allow small businesses to just go to one spot to get their certifications. So that should really um, ease the burden from the small businesses standpoint in gaining access to those federal contracting opportunities. Now, the federal government you know, purchases everything from uh, catering to heavy equipment um, to janitorial services, anything that you could possibly think of. And we want to ensure that small businesses have uh, a, a part of that. It is about $700 billion a year is what the, the government purchases. So even giving, you know, small businesses 25 or 28 percent of that is huge. Um, so we're excited about that and more to come in the coming weeks on that program. We've also launched um, a green lending initiative. And what we're doing is engaging lending institutions and not necessarily banks or credit unions, although we're always happy to welcome them into our programs, but other entities that could potentially look at um, kind of the end user for that green lending. Um, say, for example, um, an HVAC or, you know, heating and air conditioning company that is looking to assist um, business, uh, homeowners with upgrading their equipment or perhaps solar panels or anything like that. So we're, we're engaging um, in those conversations. And that's actually very exciting from the standpoint of adding more lenders to our loan programs. Um, what else? There's so much going on. We just finished our uh, end of the fiscal year yesterday, September 30th. So now we're working on um, 2025 goals and projects. And uh, there's a lot to look forward to in 2025. Now, I know, as you, you know, so eloquently stated, small businesses are going through a rough time right now, especially with respect to where interest rates are um, in the scheme of things. The Federal Reserve had lowered the interest rate by half a point uh, last week. So that's great news. We're hopeful that we'll get a couple more of those cuts in the next few months. Um, again, the election plays a lot into that. Um, and so we'll, we're, we'll see where things take us into 2025. But SBA is here to support small businesses in anything. Um, 
with, with you know a, a product array from loans to contracting to our resource partner network. Well, um, I, I do appreciate you sharing so many great news. Uh, having uh, so much of pretty negative agenda in the media right now connected to elections or whatever mm -hmm. else people like. It seems like it sells better and gets more views. Um, I think it's, it's, it's extremely important to share that, hey, it's not that bad. It's actually good if we look at good perspectives. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's exciting that you have so many programs. Uh, if you could briefly share with me uh, and our audience, uh, let's say there is a new business. What mm -hmm. are uh, some of the steps, if, uh, or if you could mention all of the steps that the company has to do to be ready to get a contract with a governmental institution? Mm -hmm. So great question, Victor. So the cities and states, uh, local municipalities, they all contract and uh, they all have requirements that they contract with small businesses. So from the federal standpoint, we assist small businesses, um, you know, from just inception of that business through, you know, their life cycle, through their exit plan. It depends on where they are in that cycle, on what programs they're uh, allowed to participate in. I had mentioned 8A a moment ago, and 8A is simply part of the Small Business Act. Um, but it is kind of a, uh, a mentoring program where we as SBA will assist businesses that are at least two years old. They have to have a two-year history in order to participate in that particular contracting program but we'll assist them by introducing them to contracting officers from other federal agencies. From my standpoint, I always think that it's a very personal um, relationship, if you will. If you create a relationship with somebody that you are looking to contract with, say for example, the Army Corps of Engineers, try to create a relationship with the contracting officers within the Army Corps and show them what your capabilities are. How can you perform on the contracts that they need done? Um, we can assist with making those introductions. We actually do a lot of meetings here at my office where we take um, potential contracting firms and contracting firms that are already in our programs and match them up with federal agencies. So we have different federal agencies that come in and we allow for kind of that networking. And we, you know, would tell the small businesses, when you come to these meetings, make sure that you've got um, your capability statement. And essentially a capability statement, Victor, is just a one page document and it can be front and back that will explain to the, the federal agency what experience you have, what performance standards do you uh, abide by, what NAICS codes, and the NAICS codes are a, um, it, it's a, a numbering system that classifies businesses in their um, segment, if you will. Um, but we, we would advise them to just come prepared. If you've got uh, a company business plan, you know, bring that and, and make sure that you have the wherewithal to perform on the contracts. So when I, when I say that, I want to preference it by, in some instances, small businesses will, entering the, will enter the contracting arena but what happens is they don't realize that the payment schedules for federal agencies, and even in some cases, the state or, or local municipalities, they pay, you know, 60, 90, perhaps even 120 days out. So that small business has to have some type of a cash reserve that they can utilize to pay their employees, to pay their um their providers, their, uh, you know, to, to get their equipment, um, you know, keep their equipment up and running, et cetera. So it, it's always a good idea to kind of look at this holistically with mm -hmm. everything in play. And can you 
perform on these contracts and on your capability statement, if you've got, you know, a $200,000 credit line, put that on your capability statement. If, if you've got a million dollar credit line, put that on there so that the firms know, okay, so even if we can't pay for, you know, 45 or 60 days, this firm can still operate during that time because we don't want to put businesses in a position to where they're struggling with trying to operate during these federal contracts. Right, right. Um, except for um, all these preparations, um, mm -hmm. how important is, for example, to you as, as a governmental um, officer, official, uh, when you are um, checking the candidates for contracts, how mm -hmm. important to you is uh, the strength of their brand? Um, I've got multiple questions uh, during or after my interviews or workshops about the importance of building the brand. And I'm a big advocate for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like something that speaks for you. But um, does it work the same way with the government? You know, that's actually a great question, too. And I, I'm hesitant to say no, but I'm only going to say no because these businesses are entering the contracting arena trying to prove themselves and create a brand name. Once they gain access to these contracting opportunities, they're then able to build their resume, to rebuild their capability statement, saying, you know, I performed for the, the fish and game department, or I performed for, you know, the city of Sacramento, or whatever the case is. That is where the, the brand is actually built, is in the work that's being done. So um, anything that is uh, outside of, of this scope, uh, for example, uh, media, uh, publications, uh, mm -hmm. all these things which work in just the business world, mm -hmm. they are of a less value or they are still of a value? Oh, no, they're definitely of value, but they're just not as um, important, I would say, in having on your capability statement. It doesn't matter whether it's ABC company. If you can perform on that contract and you're a small business, it's beneficial to the government to contract with you. There are also um, different points allocated with the contracts and, and bids. And um, building that brand, although it's important to your company and for you in graduating the, the program, it's not necessarily that important to that governmental entity at that point in time. What's important is that you can perform and that you can perform well. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing. We'll definitely uh, dive into um, this program that you've uh, mm -hmm. mentioned. Now you've mentioned uh, one of the factors as the elections are coming and everybody is getting a little bit um um, crazy, uh, I would say. Uh, I would use this word with your permission. Um, how does uh, this period of time, which is uh, close to the elections, impact SBA's operations, impact funds, if any? Mm -hmm. um, so we, um, <clears throat> the, the administrator of the SBA, she sits at the cabinet. So it's a cabinet level position. And it's been so since the Obama administration. So regardless of who comes in, SBA is still going to be here. We've got a history um, of supporting small businesses. And in fact, we're the only federal agency that has the sole purpose of supporting small businesses. We've been around since 1953. We're not going anywhere. But what I will say is during times like this, it, it does lead to a lot of angst for small businesses. There's uncertainty on what potentially is going to happen. But small businesses can rest assured that regardless of what happens in the political arena, we will be here to support them. We um, have 68 district offices throughout the country and our U.S. territories that do only that, and that is support small businesses. And that's whether it is getting started or growing or access to capital, anything along those lines. From the standpoint of budgetary concerns, now the SBA, um, we've, we are doing our best to um, reach every small business out there. 
but we're a very small agency. So we've got a resource partner network that is funded by the federal government. And in the case of California, actually, we're funded um, or the resource partner network is also funded by the governor's office of business and economic development. So they supplement what SBA provides as well. The resource partner network is kind of um, our boots on the ground. Those are the folks that are out in the communities working with small businesses one on one and doing mentoring and counseling and technical assistance, helping businesses to put together their financial projections for perhaps a loan that they're going after, or perhaps helping in creating a business plan or a capability statement. Absolutely. So, yeah. From the standpoint of, of the elections, it's not going to affect us. Um, it will affect the market. It potentially could affect interest rates, but we are still here to support businesses. That's uh, that's that's amazing. Um, I think that um, one of the main reasons why I would like to have these um, episodes with you and uh, share more about SBA is uh, what I've what I've seen during my workshops uh, with businesses, whether it's individuals or uh, small companies, LLCs, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, they use a lot of Dr. Google advice or Dr. YouTube advice for businesses. Yeah. They try to follow these um, influencers, uh, which just show off with you know a Lamborghini or a Rolex. And uh, to me, what what they do, okay, it works for them. Maybe they sell something online, but uh, it it might just uh, mislead small businesses, whether they exist already or they want to scale or they are about to be born. So um, I would really appreciate if we could do more with with you, with if you wish um, your other colleagues as well to promote mm -hmm. more to help the businesses because I see the actual help through uh, our connection to the businesses uh, with all the SBA knowledge, expertise, and, and, and the resource, which we all can utilize and, and help each other because the more we make, the more we pay tax, right? So it's, 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 a, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, Victor, I, I sincerely appreciate you um, doing the, the California Live podcasts. It really helps us to amplify the voice of SBA and the products and services that we offer. We don't have a marketing budget. That's not something that the federal government does. So we don't go out there and put up billboards on the side of the freeway or do radio or television ads. That's just not the, the arena that we play in. But it's folks like you that help get the word out to small businesses that these resources are available to them and they're available at no cost. And I think that's kind of the beauty of it is that we all pay taxes, why not, uh, you know, utilize the the tax dollars that you've already paid and get your money's worth by utilizing the, the products and resources of SBA and our resource partner network? Yes, absolutely. I'm all for that. And um, I'm more than happy and open to do as many episodes as uh, as you can um, to help the businesses. I see that the businesses are in need. They don't know. Um, I've spoken a lot with businesses, mm -hmm. let's say, in the Chinese community of California, mm -hmm. Southern, Northern. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They don't know. Only through some seminars, they would found they 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 would find out about SBA programs for purchasing businesses, which you've shared with mm -hmm. me during our meetings last time. And that's mm -hmm. it. And I'm telling them there is way more than that. Dive into it, and you know they're like, not really. It's impossible. Like, yeah, it is possible. Um, so um, I'll be and more you bring up a very. I apologize. I don't mean no. to interrupt you, but you bring up a very good point. Um, we also provide in language services and translation services. So if there is um, you, you mentioned the Chinese community, if the Chinese community is looking for um, some training and expertise in, you know, how to gain access to capital or to contracting opportunities or, you know, how to build a business plan or how to approach a lender, that type of thing. We can do the translation services for those trainings. And again, there's no cost. Um, but you're right. There's a lot of communities that don't know about the, the work that is being done kind of behind the scenes. And to amplify that voice and to get the word out is extremely important. So I right. thank you for your advocacy. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. Also, uh, I've I've seen um, not the most positive um, attitude towards the government, and I see the reason that people just don't know. And uh, again, influence of the media. Uh, to me personally, uh, you might have a different uh, feeling, but um, when I see a certain personality on media, on Instagram or TV, I already know what is the agenda. I just my mind clicks off. I I, I stop listening. And mm -hmm. I believe that it might happen to a few other people as well. And uh, instead of promoting all the negativity, uh, instead of just criticizing the governor, like let's think how much work do they have to do? And let's actually educate ourselves and see what the agencies do because they, they do a lot of work. I, mm -hmm. I know you personally. I, I haven't seen uh, probably such a hardworking person in America uh, as you are. And you do help a lot of people practically not just with words not just with an email or a connection and uh, i i believe that a you and your agency deserves to be known by the people and i believe that people deserve to know about you and and gain more opportunities together well thank you victor and i appreciate your kind words um you know something to keep in mind is that since we are a government agency you know there there are um goals that we strive towards, but those are internal goals. We don't, we're not gold on how many loans we give out or how many contracts we assist with. This is just what we do. Um, we're gold on other things internally, um, on a lot of compliance items, but it's invisible to the, the small business network. And I know that, like you said, you know, when you're watching, um, different podcasts or YouTube or something, there's always an end game. Somebody is always trying to sell you something. In our case, we don't sell anything. We just offer a product or a service that potentially could get a business started and growing and building our communities through those products and services. And that's really what we're all about. Right. And I think that with these words, uh, you just uh, answer the question of multiple, many, many people around the America and around the world. They ask if American dream is still alive and you just answer the question. It is. It's how to build your own business. It's how to grow it, it's how to help the community. And then, yeah, sure, you could buy your own house. Right. Um, you as Absolutely. a leader, uh, you as a leader, you mentioned that um, you're planning for 2025. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are your personal goals uh, in terms of SBA for 2025? So we, um, I think I've shared with you previously that we're a little short staffed right now. So we're looking to um, add to our team here at SBA so that we can better service our district office territory. So uh, within the state of California, there are six different district offices. Sacramento is the largest ge geographically. So we've got 21 counties that we service. And one of the main goals that I've got for 2025 is finding people that um, have the same heart that we do and want to help small businesses by going out into the communities and doing training and providing that technical assistance that's so desperately needed from small businesses. Because as you stated, Businesses don't know what they don't know. They don't, um, they, they perhaps have a, a preconceived notion about something, but in reality, it may not be a, a real thought. So just providing that guidance to small businesses, of course, building our communities, uh, reaching out to our rural territories and better servicing those territories by providing, you know, the SBA um, expertise in, in those areas. Um, another thing that I will say is that this green lending initiative, I think really could um, be a game changer for small businesses. I think that there's a lot to be done in that area. Of course, adding to our lender network is, is in the best interest of everybody because some banks and credit unions are not apt to say, for example, uh, provide a, a business loan to a restaurant maybe their concentration limits in their own portfolio are too stretched and they can't do say restaurant loans 
And that's just an example. But to make the connection with a business to another lending institution that does want to do those restaurant loans, that's really where we shine. And so those are basically the goals that we have is to further engage with the small business community to further um, assist small businesses who want to start or scale. And all around our 21 county um, district office, we want SBA to kind of be that that product of choice, if you will. And again, with the, the lending that is done, SBA is not a direct lender. We simply operate in the background and we guarantee loans that lending institutions make. But what that allows for is for a small business to get a yes versus a no from a lender. So if they're a startup, for example, um, and they don't have the historical cash flow that's necessary for from the bank standards, we can come in on the, the back end and mitigate the risk of that lending institution by providing that guarantee so that that small business can still get the capital that they need. So that those are kind of the, the top priorities of the, um, of the district office for 2025, and also adding to our, um, the firms that we support through contracting. And again, we work with um, the state of California through um, DGS, and the Department of General Services, um, as well as all of our federal partners to make sure that the small businesses are gaining access to those contracts and getting a piece of the pie because it is a very large pie. Right, right. Um, does SBA have any uh, uh, niches or uh, spheres of business that are of a uh, higher priority? For example, farming versus uh, green energy or something like that? Sure. Again, that's a great question, too. And I think a lot of it is um, geography related, right? So in the Central Valley, um, farming is, is a big thing. And so a lot of businesses are being built around farming. Um, green uh, energy is, is another thing, and that's obviously not necessarily geographic related, although um, it depends, you know, you want solar uh, panels or solar farms in kind of inland and not necessarily on the coast because you get a lot of fog. So it, it just depends on the area. Um, with respect to, um, you know, your, your little convenience store or a restaurant, that happens everywhere. Everybody needs to eat. And um, so those businesses are built anywhere. Contracting firms can really be anywhere because they're going to go to where the jobs are. So um, it, it it depends, I guess I would say. It definitely depends. Um, if we may um, take a little step back and uh, talk a little bit about the elections. Um, politics aside, we have two candidates which to me, and I believe to many other business owners, uh, we're not extremely specific about their plans for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, have you um, f have you found, have you read um, anything in their programs uh, that would be maybe beneficial or maybe a little bit less beneficial to the small businesses? You know, I appreciate the question, Victor, but I'm I'm not um, I'm not in a position to to say anything political. We are um, the agency. Again, we're a federal agency. So no matter who is president, um, we're still going to be here. We're still going to be supporting small businesses. And that's our job. It, it The the Biden-Harris administration has come up with uh, a lot of great programs over the last four years that um, have benefited small businesses. And prior to that, the, the previous president came up with great programs. So it each, um, each presidency kind of brings its own opportunities to small businesses. But I think everybody is on the same page in knowing that small businesses build communities and we can strengthen our economy through those small businesses. Um, so it, it doesn't matter who's at the helm, if you will, um, but we're still going to be here and still going to be doing the same thing that we've always done, which is helping to start 
and grow and expand small businesses into uh, different uh, areas and perhaps uh, exporting their goods overseas. And, you know, whatever is best for the small business is really what we want. Um, Madam Heather, I think that was um, a very important and powerful message. Uh, what I do and our team um, within the podcast and our podcast satellites, uh, we stay away from the political point. We stay away from this political agenda. And we want to analyze each administration, each candidate into that administration. What are they planning to do? Critics aside, all the emotions aside, all the negativity and toxicity aside, what is that actually practical that they have done or they will be doing? And uh, I, I saw that we're getting pretty nice growth of attention to it because it's nothing toxic. It's like actual numbers. It's actual mm -hmm. plan. And I, I do appreciate your uh, input that uh, it doesn't really matter who comes to, to, the, to the cabinet, to the office. Uh, we still have programs. We still have SBA with with us and uh, helping small businesses. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for 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 this assurance. And I think for a lot of people that will be uh, very helpful. Excellent. Yes. Well, thank you, Victor. I do have tons of questions. Uh, I know that your time is limited and you are very busy. Plus the, the fiscal year has just finished. So I, I assume that, you know, um, I won't take too much time right now. I do look forward to our next uh, next meeting, whether it's online or in person. And uh, I believe that we'll be able to share a lot more with our audience and have it as a tradition. I would really, really enjoy that. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you kind of getting the word out about SBA and, and all that we have to offer. Um, again, there's no cost for any of the products and services that we offer. And I think that it's very important that small businesses seek um, additional guidance with you know what they're trying to do. And again, whether it's starting or growing or expanding into new markets, we're there to um, to hold their hand the entire way.